Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is maximum index and it is a medium level problem. So this problem statement is very short and it says that we have been given an array of n integers and our task is to find the maximum value of j minus i such that it follows this particular constraints array of i is less than or equal to array of j. So let me just quickly explain you this particular thing with the help of an example test case. So we're going to take this one and so we have the sample test case here and it says that let me just repeat the condition that j minus i should be maximum this value should be maximum and array of i should be less than equals to array of j right so these are our two constraints so this is constraint number one and this is constraint number two so whenever we see this what comes to our mind so these two statements together means that we want to find elements such that they are as far apart as they can be and their values should be in order that means this particular element the first element should be smaller than or equals to the second element so in this case this is the exact answer and you will see that the distance between them is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so there the answer is 6 and uh, you will see that this is the maximum distance that is possible in this particular case right so how do we actually come to this particular answer or how do we actually come to this particular value so we know that we want our first element to be small and our second element to be big right if they are both equivalent it is not a problem if they are like a lot of distance apart it is still not a problem it says that the first element should not be bigger right so we know that we can make the first element as small as possible and we can make the last element as big as possible but the thing is we want to solve it in o of n time right otherwise what we could have done is let's say we have this particular array right now i am at this particular index right now for this particular index i can traverse from the back right and find the first value which is greater than this particular value right because let's say it was 8 here and i found 10 here right so it is greater than so this satisfied the second condition and if i go to the left to find another value greater than 8 then it would not be in an optimal answer because it will not satisfy the first condition this is the maximum distance that it can be for example let's change the values so let's say 5 was here then I would have to look at the left position as well because I have not found any value which is greater than 8. Now as soon as I found a value greater than 8, I will not have to move backwards and this would be my best answer. But this approach will still take O of n square time because in worst case you will have to traverse the whole array for each element. Right. So obviously this is not going to work. So what we instead do is we focus on only one condition at a time. Right. Let's focus on the second condition. So we want that the first element a of i should be less than or equals to a of j. Right. This is our condition. So let's say we start from i is equals to 0 and j is equals to 0. Right. And since both of them are at the same element, let's say both of them are at the same element, they will obviously satisfy this particular condition because both of them will be equals. Now, if I want to increment or if I want to uh, make my answer better, my only way is to move the j to the right. So for example, if i and j were at the same point, my only option is to move this j pointer to the right one step so I can like make my answer better. Now if this condition is still satisfied, if this condition is still satisfied, I can again try to make my answer better by moving j to the left. Right. Again, I will check this condition. If this condition is still satisfied, I will again try to make my answer better. But what if the condition is not satisfied? So in that case, I can try to reduce my area or my search space. So till now, you must have figured out that this is similar to some other approaches as well. So this approach is popularly known as sliding window. Right. So what we are doing is we are initially taking both of the elements at the same position. Right. If our condition is satisfied, we are trying to extend our search space. Right. We are trying to extend the value of j. But as soon as we realize that the condition is not satisfied, we try to shorter the range by incrementing the value of i. Right. So if i and j will come closer and closer, the answer will reduce, but we will be able to find a valid range. Right. 
So eventually, if none of the range is satisfied, again i and j will be at the same position. And at this particular position, we know that the condition is always satisfied, right? But now the next question is, we know how to find our best answer, right? We know according to this condition, how we will be able to find the best answer, right? But how do we actually check whether this condition is satisfied or not, right? So this is our next question. To make this even simpler, what we can do is, we can calculate two arrays, prefix and suffix. Right. So this prefix array is actually going to store the prefix minimum and this suffix array is actually going to store the suffix maximum. So suffix maximum means let's say suffix suffix of j is going to denote the maximum element in the range starting from j and ending till n. Right. And prefix of i let's say it is going to denote the minimum element starting from 1 going till index i. Right. So this is what the arrays are actually denoting. How is this going to help us? So we know, let's say a and b are two elements and a is less than equals to b. Let's say prefix of i is equals to a and suffix of j is equals to b. Right. So I know that in this particular range, let's say, so let me just create an array again. So if this is an array, right. So if this is index i, and this is index j. So I know that in this particular range, there exists some element a. I don't know where it is, but I know that they, that it definitely exists. And in this particular range, there exists an element b. Right. And we already know that this condition is satisfied. Right. So j minus i is going to be my probable answer. Right. Why probable answer? Why is it not the definite answer? Because I know a exists somewhere in this range. I don't know where it is. And similarly, I know B exists somewhere in this range, but I don't know where it is, right? So J minus I is going to be my probable answer. If B was here and A was, let's say, here only, right? Then J minus I at the current state would not be our best answer. It may or may not be our best answer. But in this case, if I have written B here, you will clearly see that it is not the best answer, right? So this particular prefix and suffix array will just help us to identify whether this statement can be satisfied or not. So according to like the uh, sliding window algorithm that we discussed earlier, we know that this condition is being satisfied. So I move j to the right, right? And again, this is again satisfied. I will again move j to the right. So let's say I move j here. Now you will see that eventually i in j will be at some pointers where it is exactly going to denote the position of a and b. We are not at all worried about the positions of A and B. We just know that this is going to be one of our probable answers, right? So at each step, I am going to take the maximum of answer comma J minus I. Each time the condition is being satisfied. Now you will observe whenever I move J here, the answer for suffix of J is going to change now. Now S of J is going to be some other value other than B, provided that B was not also here, right? Let's say there was some other value C here. Right. So the, the value is going to be changed to C. Now, depending upon whether A is less than equals to C or A is greater than equals to C, we will again set our maximum value or we will not set it. Right. So the conclusion is this prefix and suffix array will just help you to get an idea of what can be a probable answer. But a sliding window algorithm along with prefix and suffix array will help you to get a definite answer of what is the maximum value of j minus i. I am explaining you this particular part again because this might be a little bit confusing. We have calculated prefix of i and suffix of j, right? So if j was originally here, let me remove this j. So if j was originally here, I know that the value b exists, exists somewhere in this particular range. I am not sure that b is here only. I know that it exists somewhere here. That is why I have to use the sliding window algorithm along with it. Right, to find the maximum value of j minus i. So I hope that this approach was clear to you. Let me just quickly go through it again. So our task was to uh, find the maximum value of j minus i, providing that it satisfies this particular condition, right? That a of i should be less than equals to a of j. Now uh, we discovered an algorithm. So it is popularly known as sliding window. It is a very well known algorithm. So what we essentially do is we focused on only one condition, right? that a i should be less than equals to a j 
and with the help of sliding window we wanted to maximize our value of j minus i right so we discovered that if i and j at this at the current state are satisfying this particular condition then we can try to expand our range by moving j to the right right if it does not satisfy we can try to contract our range by moving i to the left right now the problem was how do we actually check whether a of i is less than or equals to a of j right so we like to deal with this very in a very smart manner we created two arrays prefix and suffix so you will realize that this prefix and suffix array never helps us to find the exact value for coordinates i and j right if i let's say if some some value c was here at j position and a is actually greater than c the prefix and suffix array will still tell us that the condition is being satisfied whereas in real life if you choose i and j indexes they are not satisfying the condition because a is greater than c but we still need to say that the condition is being satisfied so that we can try the best possible value of b by expanding the value of j to the right right only when at this particular position we say that the condition is being satisfied only then we will move j to the right so we need to make sure that even at this particular position we say that the condition is being satisfied so that we can move our j point to the to the right and eventually can reach the position of b right so this was all about the problem explanation now let me just quickly show you the code so what i have essentially done is i created two vectors prefix and suffix vectors and this is just the base, setting the base uh, indexes so for example prefix of 0 is array of 0 and suffix of n minus 1 is array of n minus 1 now i create a simple for loop and i'm setting prefix of i is equal to minimum of prefix of i minus 1 comma array of i so i set the suffix array also in the same for loop you can also create a different for loop uh, traversing it from the right to left but uh, i just did it here only so suffix of n minus i minus 1 is going to be maximum of suffix of n minus i comma array of n minus i minus 1 right now what i do is i create three indexes i j and answer so i and j are going to be the pointers or indexes and j answer is obviously our final answer so we have a while loop while j is less than n this is basically to make sure that the right pointer never exceeds the size of the array right now i just check whether prefix of i is less than equals to suffix of j i can set my answer as maximum of answer comma j minus i and i can try to expand my range otherwise i try to contract my range by incrementing i so this was all about today's problem of the day and finally i can return my answer let me just quickly submit and show you that this approach works and this is absolutely correct so you will see that uh, it passes all the test cases and i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm and this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you are one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later so that's it for today share this channel with your friends until the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye